Let's go. Greatest Bobo. Greatest Kiki. Greatest Boom. 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 Fundamental pose. Knock ya ya ya. Solidarity forever. Solidarity forever. Solidarity forever. Father, you are so strong. Isoleto. In Africa. In Africa. Isoleto. Seventh heaven, Bosa. Revolutionary Congress. Bosa. 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 And I greet you for them. Yeah. Once they think straight, and without even prompting you, part of what you mentioned, 
that's the other way. Now, for example, to motivate people, that you should not be cheerful and all of that. We thank you for being very articulate, and we know how many young people that have been able to lift up and promote to better persons and better human beings. Yeah. And that's our thinking also. That if we can remove the poverty mentality, and then we can work very hard with all sincerity of purpose. Mm. And if there are the political will on the part of our leaders also, we we'll definitely get somewhere mm. we'll be able to erase all the negative uh, points that people have been talking about in Nigeria. So we're very happy to have you here. I don't want to bore you down so much as we mm. uh, speak. We're very, very, very happy to see you and we look forward to working with you, to collaborating with you. And if there's anything you also think um, we can do together, I'm sure on behalf of my president, uh, those are very, very open. Um, so once again, you are very welcome to us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, because whenever God gives you a vision, the problem is that the vision is always bigger than you. Yes. If your vision is something you can achieve, then it's not from God. It has to be, it has to consume you, consume everything that you know. Then when it brings people to consume all of us, and then just keeps growing and growing and growing. So, yes. And it is good that at this point to say a little history, the, to tell you why I do what I'm doing. Um, I, I was born in 1972 in Obanikoro. Wow. Yes. 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 And uh, my mom uh, had like um, five children for my dad. So we moved, at the, when I was seven years old, we moved to Mende Maryland. My, my father was a bit, was a very quiet man. He wasn't someone that used to talk too much. And my mom was very loud. You saw she beat me so much. I even thought she hated me. Then at the age of 13, my father traveled to Akwaibom with my mom. Came back, no. He came to pick me up from Federal Government College in Janiki, where I schooled. Then in my JS2, he came late. So we walked from the hostel to the gate. That was the longest walk I've ever done with my father in all my life. And that was the last walk I did. Because after then, he traveled and did not come back. He was poisoned by his brother. Yeah. So at that point in time, we found out that my father had a second wife. Yes, and four children. So we're now nine living in the house. And the only thing my father had, which was kept, was a 504 SR, registration number LA3069MC. Everything that my father owned was taken away by family. And I keep telling men that anything you do, you must always plan for your family early. Once you tell a woman, I love you, start planning for her. Yeah. Because you don't know the day you will leave. So when he left, the only thing that we knew that my father had was a 504 SR. So we sold the car for 11000 Gave my mom 6000 my stepmom 5000 Now, my mom being competitive was expecting that I would stand up mm -hmm. and fight with my steps. But me, I was not. I believe that even if my father made a mistake, it is my responsibility to manage what he has done and correct it. I was not called to fight my stepbrother. I was called to be somebody that will build up what is happening. But the two mothers didn't see it that way. So that brought a problem. So I went from Janiki, I went to, I didn't do well in English. I was, a, I'm a mathematician. English is not my thing. If you tell me two times two, I'll tell you four. But if you tell me multiply two by two, it's confusion there. Mm -hmm. So I didn't used to do that. So I did not have English. I had a P in English. I went to Uniben in 89. I was dropped. I went to Lasso in 90. I was dropped because of English. 1991, I got admitted into Unicar. So when I got into Unicar for Agric Economics, my mom was happy. Now they called me to the dean's faculty. And they told me that uh, I couldn't, that I had to step down because I didn't have English. So in, in that vice, um, I decided to take agric education. When my mom heard I was doing agric education, she decided to disown me. 
Yeah, so I was disowned at 19. Then the lady who had a shop in Onikewaya decided to allow me to come and stay there. So I would stay in the shop in Onikewaya and her house in um, Okbae Factory Set, Anthony. And three months, on the fourth month, I'll go to school. So I missed all my 10 papers, my tests, my projects. And long and short, I came out of Unica with a third class extra year, and NYC did not post me. So I have not seen my certificate of graduation till today. I don't have an NYC, so I'm not qualified for employment. But the only thing that I knew I was good at was I did not want to see another man lose his father. Mm. That's all. Mm. That now helped me mm. into, you know, preparing, you know, working in a church as a security guard for three years without salary. Mm. Now, so if people give me 10 naira, 20 naira, once I have 13 naira, I go to the street which construction workers are. And I will stay there. And then um, if they're eating, the kind of food they eat is different from normal human beings. So I'll eat that food and, and cool. So I woke up one morning out of anger and I said I cannot remain like this. If I have to, it's either I win or I win. I didn't give an excuse for myself. If security is what is my passion, I have to succeed at this thing. So I began to read magazines back to back, back to back on security. I took night bus one day from um, um, Aquaibom to Lagos to come to Ido, you know, to Ebutemeta, to see one man called Chief Patrick Keku. I stood in that bus for Moyo, I'll never forget it. From eight in the night till six in the morning, there was no blood in my body. Everything had gone down. I couldn't bend my knee. But, you know, I just went there and I bought the back edition. Ten, I came back and I sat down. I read the magazine as if I was going for exam. Mm. When I finished it, I started applying it. So it was during the military era. I started becoming friends with the military boys because they knew, they knew I knew what I was doing. That now started increasing the passion, the interest in security and everything. Unknown. Unknown to them, that thing had entered me. And that's why it came out to me that whatever you eat, and you continually eat. I ate security morning, afternoon, and night. Whatever you eat and continually eat will eventually eat you up. Security ate me up. Day and night. Day and night. That was all I thought about. And I was serving in a church. So I even went to Bible school to say, okay, let me go and turn to pastor. Mm. Who's I? The, the Bible school, they told me that I was not called to be a pastor. I should go and do something else. Mm. So I went out to go and do security, do security. And I tell everybody, you see, you make the mistake. The responsibility of a security man is to open the gate. Mm. Yes, open the gate. So no matter how big you are, if Kasali does not open that gate, you are not entering now. Mm. You know? Even if he has only one shirt, one trouser, his family is leaving that gate house. He has a responsibility to grant you access to Sioga. You cannot force your way in. In the physical, wherever the gate is, that's where the gate man is. But in the spiritual, wherever the gate man is, that's where the gate is. So I metamorphosed from being a gatekeeper physically to being a spiritual gatekeeper. So if you come to me now and tell me you cannot succeed, I know there's something wrong with your brain. I'll beat you till you can see yourself. Because there is no excuse you will tell me. You don't have a father, neither did I. My father died when I was seven. My own died too. The, uh, my mother did not. My mother sold pekeri. My mother sold granola. My mother sold fufu. The, you live there. My mother chased me out of the house. My mother. What do you want to tell me? I went to Unical. I came up with a third class. I didn't even see class for too long. Extra year, and I don't even have NYC. I don't have this. I don't know what the certificate looks like on my name. So I don't have any document. Okay, you live with your uncle. No, I started taking care of pigs. That was my first job. 
from pigs to security as in a church and has caught in somebody's house. For me to eat, that person has to go to his mother's house to eat. So when they're eating, I would join them to eat. That's how I used to eat. But until I got angry with poverty, got angry with that situation called poverty, it didn't change. I tell everybody that anger is the gift of God to man. If you want to change from one level to the next level, you have to get angry. There's no other way. Because what you don't get angry about, you permit. You permit. So I said no, and I began to do that. And I started my business, um, security. Just kept doing that security, and I wanted to get married. Because I told my people that, look, I needed to be able to reproduce in my father's name. To back up a bit, when they disowned me, I just could change the name. So nobody should bother. I don't want to know anybody again. I was ready to die. I, I said, no, I don't need this. But I said, look, my father can't be successful. Can't be somebody that has bought a car and I didn't buy a car. Monkey no the bone goat. So if my father could provide food for his house, I will provide food for my house. So if I'm going to have a house, then I should be able to you know, have my own family. So I decided to get married, which is another interesting story. I told my, I told the girl I wanted to marry, which is my wife now, and then I was caught in somebody's house. Whether she would agree, she agreed. Meanwhile, no house, no job, no money. Her father, she, her mother didn't want to see me, so she told the, she went to threaten the mother that nobody disturbed her. So by then my mom heard that um, I'm now, uh, first of all, that I'm mad in my head that I go to church morning, afternoon, and night. Now I said I want to get married. I said, okay. So I went to see the... So my mom met with her mom, and it was a fight. Mm. So when your mom doesn't like your wife mm. to be, that's a problem. Yeah. When your mom doesn't like your wife, mm. and then your, your, her mom doesn't like you, it's a situation. <laughs> when your mom doesn't like your wife, mm. Your, her mom doesn't like you, and the pastor's wife is not in support. It's called a predicament. Hmm. So I had a predicament. Hmm. Hmm. They told my wife hmm. that Ubon cannot buy you coke. Hmm. I held that word, hmm. and I told her, on this earth, hmm. I will buy Coca-Cola. Hmm. Wow. So yeah, you will not and nobody will leave his comfort zone until he is provoked. Mm. And the law of inertia says that an object at rest will remain at rest mm. until an external force. Mm. It is not internal. Something must irritate you from the outside to trigger what is on the inside. That inside will not come out until something touches it. You are comfortable being poor. You are comfortable being at your level. You are comfortable living in this face me I slap your house. Mm. But until the day your colleague or your neighbor or your friend pass there, they see your small house. That is when you will think bigger. So I now said, okay, if that is the case, if I can't buy her Coke, buy her Coca-Cola, I asked her, are you with me or you are with them? She said that we don't have any problem. We're together. I said, no problem as the forces of life were had. I took a drink to go and see my eldest uncle. A drink. Mm. I came down and said, Papa, sir, I want to get married. He returned the drink back to me two weeks later. <laughs> he said I should go and settle with my mom because my mom was not in support. I told my uncle to his face, your office or not that will take. Mm. I don't have time for all this rubbish. Mm. Yes. So I now moved outside. I saw a man wearing traditional outfit. I don't know the man from Adam. I approached this man. We did rehearsal. I took this man to the knocking of my wife. Knocking. Somebody I don't know. We did rehearsal on the road. I paid the man. The man. That's how I went to do knocking. So my father-in-law said he wanted a patrol uncle to come. And then everybody was afraid of my mom. I said, okay, no problem. My junior sister got married, no problem. Then my uncle said, I should come, we should go back again. And I went. They gave me a list. The list was five pages. I typed it on computer. It reduced to four. 
but the content did not reduce. We went to negotiate. My cousin was marrying from that same village. Unfortunately for him, when the father saw the list, he returned the girl and the money back, mm. the, and the list back. Me, I said that the girl I want to marry is more important than anything. Mm. I'm the one that will pay the price to marry this girl. Mm. So it is not family, it's me. She's marrying me, not my family, me. Mm. So I now paid the price, I got married. Mm. When I got married, I didn't have a house. I didn't have car, I didn't have job. Mm -hmm. But I was hungry. I knew that it is the responsibility of a man to take care of his wife. I was caught in a friend's house, and I decided to do that. So while she is there, I will walk from Jack on Day to Lucky Face One. Wow. If I see any house that has no consentina wire, mm. there, I will tell them I can do the job. Mm. If they give me the job, I will do the See, God said man should walk. Mm. Walk. So he will bless the labor of my hands. Mm not the prayer, the labor of my hands. So I now go outside and I began to walk. They gave me, and when you walk, there's always an opportunity. Me, I'm a mathematician. If Bible says one will put a thousand, two will put 10,000 to flight. Me alone, 1,000, with my wife, 10,000. A plus B is 10,000, A is 1,000, what is B? 9,000, shake it up. So 90% of my success was inside my wife. So I now decided that whatever it takes to cultivate my wife, I would do. She now became my altar, became the person I would always, you know, worship. If I want to, if I want to like give something like a seed, say, my wife is the biggest altar I have. When my wife is happy, God is happy. He that findeth the wife, findeth and obtained favor, favor from the Lord. So buy one, get one free. That became my law. Say, touch not my anointed. My wife is anointed. They did not say that it has to be a male pastor. It says that he that touched my anointed. So if I make her happy, God is happy. She carries 90%, she's happy. Yeah, so she became that altar. So anything I do is to make that girl happy. Once I do, she says, God bless you. I carry that God bless you. And I take it to God. Exchange it for favor. I am not rich because... Um, I work hard. I'm rich because God has favored me through her. Wow. And I said to myself that if God can bring a baby mm. through a woman, what else can he not bring? Mm. Yeah? That's all. So she's, she's my secret agenda. Wow. Doing that, I started my business from the bedroom. God said I should leave. I started my business from the bedroom. I tried to collocate with somebody. The guy was charging me anyhow. I stopped. So I started in my bedroom and I started. So she gave me a corner space, corner space in the bedroom, just a table and a chair. That's how I started my company. And uh, my target was on the wall. My target was I wanted to do 100 million in one year. Until you have a target and you set a time, nothing happens. Once you set target and time, everything changes. When I put that, I made the money in three months. Your target always determines your direction. Your direction determines your association. A lot of people miss it by going to associate first. When they associate first, they will now follow the person in their direction. And when they follow the person, they hope that they target to come. No. If I'm going to cook a goosey chicken soup today, I am not going to go to the cinema. I'm going to go to the market. So my direction has been determined by my target. When I go to the, to the kit market, I'm not going to buy a farm. I'm going to the goosey seller. So it is specific. When I get to the goosey seller, I go to the chicken seller. I don't have any business with the fish seller. So it reduces my waste time. So I did that, and then the business began to grow, to grow, to grow. God gave me three things, security, logistics, and maritime. I did not know anything about maritime. But whatever he has told me to do, that is what I would do. So I started doing maritime. And I didn't know anything, and I started looking on LinkedIn. I got people to show me how to do things. 
And before you know what's happening, opportunities started coming. Boom, I started hitting. And money that I was looking for to marry, I will, my account will just be heavy. When you see a lot like this in the fold, the fold will off. Because <laughs> the money. <laughs> then I began to learn that the higher the level, the higher the devil that comes against you. Mm. Yes, if you think that being poor is bad, try being rich. You will know the responsibility that is there. I continued like that. I, 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 I had to learn to upgrade my mind from 10,000 to 100,000 to 1 million to 10 million to 100 million to 1 billion to 10 billion. That I had to upgrade it. So in the middle of all this, I tried not to. I tied my business to helping the faith. So instead of me praying for myself, if I find somebody in church and I put him, when the person says, Lord, bless my company, it's blessing me. It's multi-level marketing prayer. Mm. That's my own strategy. Yeah, multi-level marketing. So that's how I do So I don't need to pray too long. If I have 50 Christians who are being blessed from because when they pray, 50 people, that are praying for me, not to concern me. I say, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. Then one day I was going to the airport to Ghana to, for a meeting. At the airport, God told me, said, hand over your company to your staff. I have a new assignment for you. Before then, I have not spoken, like, I've never done it. I said, motivation, nothing. So I, when he told me, I didn't even think twice. I just told the guy, God said, I shall nobody coming to you. The guy knelt down and I laid hands on him at the airport. And that was the last time I wore suit. That was the last time I wore suit. So I handed over the company to him, one month transition. By the turn, they thought I was joking. They thought I was joking. I handed over the company. And they gave me specific goals that I should turn 50 million youth into entrepreneurs, to employ five, five people. If you do that, you will have 250 million jobs, 50 million entrepreneurs. There will be no Boko Haram, no rubbish, no rubbish, no rubbish. So every time there's always a strategy and idea coming, and I write it, document it, and I go. So everything that I see, everything that I hear, I will see a strategy from ants, from cockroach, from everything. And I document it, and I will just follow the pattern. I am just a product of following the pattern, following the pattern. And I got into nuns, I got into students, and I believe that if any boy or girl is 20 years old and is still in their father's house, it's a shame. Mm -hmm. So I have over 30 scriptures that tell me that. So I cannot keep quiet on them. So that became my message. So if you are comfortable in your house, <laughs> I'm the worst person you will have to see. Uh, so since then, they call me troublemaker. Mm. Psalm 46, verse 1. God is a present help in time of trouble. There are only two times in the Bible that God will come. One is he habits his praises of his people. He does not share. And the second time is when you enter trouble. So if you want God to show up, enter trouble. And that's why people say that the only way to get out of trouble is to enter, <laughs> enter the trouble. So that's the brief about me. Yes. Well, okay, the question I would like to ask is that mm. empowering the youth yes. comes with a lot of responsibilities. Like, and, um, especially in Nigeria, when you give them a year, mm. you come up to like, we still need financial support. Yes. How have you been able to meander such, you know, with such challenges? Because I've told you, I use myself as an example. You don't need money to make money. You don't need, you don't need, money is always the last stage in business dealing. It is wrong for you to think that you need money first. The first stage of any business is visionary. Vision, once you have vision, provision is automatic. Now, if your vision is not clear, you will struggle with provision. But once your vision is clear, provision will come from all sides. Now, I always tell people, if you study and if you spend time on your work, you know where to start where not to start. Nigeria is a very interesting place to work because there are problems everywhere. Every problem in Nigeria is an opportunity. Now, people don't read. 
Security is a major problem. Look at in the last few days now, they burnt a lot of offices and a lot of things. Mm. Now, do you think that is a problem? It's an opportunity. The people that are going to repair all this is money for them. It's money for them. All the goods are stocked. So uh, bad news is actually good news to some people. If you look at it with a trained eye, learn from people's mistakes. Learn how they do the deal. Because if somebody, remember I said, if somebody doesn't train himself with a hundred thousand, it is risky for you to give the person two hundred thousand naira. Yes. Because if the person's mind has gotten to two hundred thousand naira, eh, he would be thinking, he will be working from that level. People make mistakes and say, okay, let me give you one million, go and start a business. If you give somebody who is not trained in one million, the first thing he will do, he will move from Isheri and he will move to Allen Avenue. Yes. When he moves, he will refurnish the house. Yes. When he refurnishes the house, he will change shirts. Yes. He will change his shirt and his trousers. By the time he's finished, finished doing it, he has 200,000. He will go and rent shop. Yeah, 150. Then he will now stock the shop with like 100K. Then he has started. What was his limit? 100K. Yes. So I don't ever talk money. In every trading that I do, money is the last part. By the time I deal with your character, your mind, money will appear. Money responds to problems. You solve a problem, money answers. That's the law. Yeah. So it's never a money problem. It's a thinking problem. I always remember where God found me. So I've never really done anything for money. If it comes to doing something for money, I will deal with the money part. But when it comes to somebody like Women Arise and Center for Change and everything, there's one thing that these foundations have, and that is character. Character is more important than anything. A good name is better than any amount of money. Anytime you have any opportunity and you think that we can do things, I will gladly join. I will bring in my entire system, and my system is thick. I have some boys in the system that will touch places you can never get to. Because like us, we have some back-end boys that do what they call funnels. And funnel, if we apply funnel for you, you'll be shocked at the magic it does. So we know how to do those things. We know how to get to places. We know how to get the archive, all those systems and people's details that will help build. So anything that we can do together, I'm ready because of the integrity of Madame that is here. Well, at this, at this uh, point in time, uh, we are glad that as a team of this great organization uh, to associate with a great motivational speaker, an entrepreneur for excellence, committed a family man, deeply spiritual, unassuming, a stickler to find a man of character, with, uh, with deep moral conduct. He's a, he's, he's a rare gem and a great role model and an inspiration both men and women. Uh, through some of the testimony has given and uh, following you on uh, Instagram, not only that, meeting you at some few programs, I know that a lot of lives will have been changed. Mm. And it's very, I mean, some of the things that you say within few minutes, you can never get to see all the multiple effects it will mm. have. Mm. Even like all of us that have listened to you here today, there is that great inspiration. Mm. And uh, I know that at times when we even have uh, uh, programs, like we did uh, after my interaction with you, I know you have hundreds of programs. You are outside the country, uh, you got back uh, quite well from the airport you are here. It's just to show that uh, you have uh, lots and lots of uh, confidence in us. Mm -hmm. I, I really want to thank you for taking that time 
And I know that you know, a lot of the things that you have said is going to last for a very long time by the time it's thrown out mm -hmm. on the social media. I've had people, maybe like uh, 16 or 17, send me, no, doctor, so so and so, be committing suicide. You don't do this, mm -hmm. you don't do that. So after uh, my interface, I'm dropping one or two things for them. They, they got converted. And I know that the, the greatest disservice anyone can do, mm. people see that maybe they are in pain and they don't know where they are going. They, they think that suicide mm. is just an option. When the person goes, that's the end. Mm. But they fail to realize that, that that's the beginning of the great hardship they are going to face. Because mm. when they get there, they, there is no option again. No. Someone can decide, okay, I don't want to go out, I want to rest. I want to pick my phone and quickly send a number. But the moment the person dies, especially through suicide, mm. oh no, that is, that is judgment and that will be the end. Mm. I, I really appreciate you for who you are, what you stand for, and I know that you remain a great role model for thousands and millions of youths. I want to thank you for coming, for sparing us the time. And my birthday, I didn't see you, although you sent messages. Uh, no, 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 we will. <laughs> so, okay. we, have, we have a plan for your birthday. Ah, okay, yeah. okay, great. No, the, uh, okay, when it's good, when you are going, I'll give you some of the okay. exercise books okay. that uh, shared on my birthday. Okay. Thank you. So, uh, the let's uh, publisher give, you just give a short vote of thanks and then you do okay. the presentation. Okay. Just a quick one. Uh, I attended your program last day that uh, Ali Baba was part of the okay, uh, okay. first lady. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Uh, 2018. So then I followed you on, on your Instagram too. Okay. On behalf of uh, Dr. Joe Kudumaki and my colleagues who stayed here, I want to say thank you for coming over to the United Secretariat. Out of your tight schedule, the final time I came on a visit. So we want to appreciate you for what you've been doing in fact to people's lives positively. Mm. So I want to say a big thank you to you. And we know this collaboration mm. will go a long way so by the special grace of God. Mm. So I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you sir for coming around. God bless you and God bless you all. And thank you too to your to your team for this great team you have. God bless you. Then on uh, on behalf of uh, Dr. Joe Kidmark she's a uh, promoter pink award. Pink Award is a recognition award. We together to celebrate Nigerians and uh, to appreciate them who have departed life. And I've told I said, oh, you are part of our award deal. So and we would love to give you an, an, an award. So and she now told me ah, that you are coming. I said, wow, that's great. <music>I didn't expect anything less, but you know, until you see it, you will not, um, you will not do know what it is. Whenever I look at your story and how you have turned into what you are now, you are one of the few leaders in Africa. Uh, forget that you are not a president. Uh, it's not the office; it's the impact. Yes. If you want to know your rank, look at how many leaders in the world talk to you and then compare it with the people they talk to in Africa. Uh, there's a difference between position and impact. Somebody can be sitting in a government office and thinks that the position is what makes him a leader. Rather, you will be sitting here and people from all over the world need your input to take a decision. I recognize you as a leader and that's why I came because I know where you are going to and I'm very open to be a partner and follow you to accomplish what God has put in your hands to do and may God strengthen you for us, may God keep you for us, may God help you that you will live here empty, whatever God has put inside you, you will not stop until you finish it and God will protect you on all sides Amen. and God keep you. We have a lot of interesting stories, there are people all over there's a young man in, um, we call him Vocal Slender, in uh, Ajegunle. 
Um, one of your research people needs to just check the boy out. You will cry. Okay. It was a it was a scavenger. And then BBC came and they saw him singing in the rubbish dump. And this guy learned to use camera and did a documentary. So there's a documentary online about Boca Slender in the rubbish dump. But his what was his gift to sing? So he has become a singer. He has gone abroad to sing in crowds now. So but I thought that's not what God wants you to do. There's something you need to do. So now he has um, a factory in Ajegule for making uniforms. So that one that you did them with I think 600 now, the 1,500, they make uniforms and bags for children. They do like, they do like, they do like 500 to 1,000. So on the, this, on the 14th, of 14th, I'm supposed to be their speaker there. We're going to Ajegunle. And they're planning to give, I think, 1,500 students bags and clothes. It'll be good for you to see what is happening there.